Hello everybody, it's John Pushkar. I'm here for another episode trying to give you useful information about trying to keep people alive in the fuels and combustion equipment industry. As is the case with many of these episodes, someone gave their life for this information to be available. Today's episode is unfortunately no exception. The incident that is the subject of this episode occurred on October 23rd, 2017. And it was as a result of an explosion. Maybe not the kind of explosion you're expecting to hear about. No, it wasn't a flammable gas deflagration or detonation. No, instead, it was a pressure release. The terrible tragedy that we'll be examining that was the subject of this incident occurred when a gentleman noticed a leak on a system that had just been repaired. The system was operating at nearly 400 pounds pressure the investigation report indicated that upon tightening a single bolt retainer on a pig launching system, the fastener failed and caused the terrible tragedy that took his life. And how about this? Look at this half inch rigid tubing. I was actually at this event. Myself and several technicians were examining a compressed natural gas system. One of the technicians decided to loosen a small fitting on a half inch rigid tubing system. He says that as soon as he touched the fitting, it suddenly violently came apart. It sounded like a shotgun going off in one's ear. I immediately turned and saw him shaking and saw the tubing bent like this. If his arm would have been in the way or God forbid some other part of his body, he could have easily been killed. This episode is dedicated to everyone who might be working around compressed gas piping systems. This includes natural gas, steam, nitrogen, compressed air. A lot of these accidents occur when people are pressure testing things pneumatically. This can be a really dangerous practice and one that should be done with great caution and in a very limited fashion. Want to know more about how to prevent these accidents at your workplace? Keep watching, because in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you some very important tips about how to prevent these kinds of accidents and keep people alive. And that life you save, it might be your own. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. The information I'm sharing with you about this incident occurred at a gas metering and regulating station in Stark County, Ohio, about 40 miles south of where I'm standing right now in Cleveland, Ohio. The incident occurred when two men were conducting service at this utility-owned regulating station. They had depressurized the system, made some repairs, pressurized it again. Apparently, one of the gentlemen noticed a leak, and according to the accident report, apparently tried to tighten this single bolt enclosure. The force of the blast and the projectiles launched him at least 20 feet into a fence post. He was pronounced dead at the scene. I'm showing you here some of the aftermath and some of the damage done to a truck that was parked quite a distance away. You can see it was a horrible event. I got this information only after a Freedom of Information Act request and many follow-ups. You would think an agency like the Public Utilities Commission of Ohio would make this information freely available for purposes like this to communicate this kind of a hazard to others, but it was very difficult to come by, as is a lot of this kind of very detailed accident information. And how about this tubing incident? When we investigated what had actually occurred, we found out that it wasn't the fitting itself that had failed. These fittings are some of the best in the world. They're made right here in Cleveland, Ohio, by a household name I'm sure you would understand. No, the problem really is, isn't the quality of the fittings. The problem is really the quality of the installation. 
And that's something that often manufacturers can't control. And that was certainly the case in this situation. Take a look here at a properly installed ferrule, and then take a look at how this one was installed. You should also know that when it comes to applying these kinds of fittings in the field, there's very precise specifications on how they should be applied and tightened. In fact, the manufacturer will sell you a gauge so that you could slip it in when the fitting's installed and make sure that you've tightened it properly. Although it appears very intuitive how you should install these, you got to remember, people get certified for welding things. It's unfortunate that there are often no requirements at all for people who bolt flanges together or people who install high pressure instrument tubing systems. Believe it or not, as intuitive as it looks, there's really a lot going on here and there's really a lot that you have to do correctly every time to make sure these instrument tubing systems are safe. Another problem that occurred at this site is that the technician was actually trying to bleed down some of this tubing. You should never be bleeding down this tubing by loosening a fitting. There are special bleed fittings like this one that are sold expressly for that purpose and allow you to do this in a safe manner. In any case, when you're bleeding down these systems or working around them at all, you got to remember, never wrench on them when they're under pressure. Wear proper PPE. Give yourself space in case that thing comes apart. Whatever that really means, it's not a spectator sport. Try not to have very many people around because things can come off and go flying. You need to verify that you've got a zero energy state with gauges that you know you can trust. There are many factors to working on high energy, high pressure piping. And the first most important factor is to make it safe and depressurize it before you touch it. That applies to even adjusting hangers on these kinds of systems. How about some lessons learned? Let's take a look at some lessons you need to know about when it comes to working on high pressure steam systems. You need to know just how dangerous steam piping can also be. After all, steam is also a pressurized gas. Let's take a look at a short clip out of my 25 most egregious hazards module that's available to you at the Prescient Technical Services online school. I spoke a little bit about steam leaks and how dangerous they can be. I want to re-emphasize that here. I wanted to show you that even a small quarter inch leak can result in death in just a minute. At 200 pounds of pressure, it's 11,000 cubic feet. You should know that in a small boiler room, it doesn't take long at all if there's some kind of a pipe break or a significant leak for you to be in a cloud of steam. I've heard boiler operators talk about tube leaks in water tube boilers where they've had to crawl out of boiler rooms because the place was filling up with steam and they had to get on their hands and knees just to find their way out. It's kind of horrifying to think about, but if you're in a steam cloud and it's over 120 degrees and 12% moisture, it could cook your lungs from the inside out. Just taking a couple of breaths and they're transporting you to a burn unit and frankly, they know once you get there, there's nothing they can do for you because your lungs will be filling up with fluid and there'd be no way to treat you. So again, be especially aware of steam leaks in small or somewhat confined spaces, steam tunnels, valve pits, small equipment rooms, shut down steam systems, make these repairs immediately. It's not worth risking your life. It wouldn't take long at all to put you in a very compromising situation. Don't try to tighten pressurized systems. I'm showing you in the two pictures on the left, gaskets that have blown out. These are on flanged connections to high pressure steam systems. I'm showing you below my picture, a gasket that's made of a special pressure sensitive material that shows contact areas. You could have very little contact area remaining and then tighten a fastener in the wrong place. And either the fastener could shear or it could decide to shear the gasket away 
Next thing you know, you end up with a bunch of steam into an arm, a face, a body part, and you're being hauled away to a burn unit. High pressure steam is not forgiving at all. It has no conscience. You're the one who has to have the conscience and the awareness to avoid the situation. Neither Prescient Technical Services, Inc. or John R. Pushkar, the presenter and author of this work, warrant or represent expressly or by implication the correctness or accuracy of the content of the information presented. The user or viewer of this work accepts any legal liability or responsibility whatsoever for the consequences of its use and misuse. Hopefully you found something here of value that you can pass on to friends or co-workers. If you can, please hit the like button and share this video. And I'd also like to invite you to the Prescient Technical Services Online School, where you'll find more than 20 modules that I've created from knowledge I've acquired over the past 40 years, traveling over 3 million miles and being in and out of more than 300 industrial plants in 12 different countries. So once again, thank you very much for being here. It's my mission to pass on important life-saving information. I'll be releasing one of these videos just about every week. And if you could subscribe in the link below, I'll make sure that you get first notice of every time a new video comes out. Once again, thank you and please have a safe day.